Josh Cannon, he likes to make videos and occasionally review shit. What's up YouTube community? My name is Josh and occasionally I like to make videos and review shit. So that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. Tonight I'm going to be reviewing a musical instrument that's a little more rare, but it's pretty cool. And I'm talking, of course, about the Omnichord, made by the Suzuki Musical Instrument Corporation. My dad bought this beast when I was about eight years old at a garage sale. Personally, I thought it was kind of corny and not very musical. Until many years later, I was listening to an R.E.M. record called Up, and I heard its un unmistakable cheesy drum machine track on there, and I heard its auto harp sounds and a few other sounds. I was like, hey, isn't that that old, dusty, cheesy instrument my dad bought a long time ago? So I busted it back out, did some more research. It's actually been used by a lot of big bands over the years, such as Brian Eno, Joni Mitchell, uh, Mark Mothersbaugh from Devo, Foster the People, and even John Mayer. I've used it on a few of my songs too, so I thought, hey, why don't I give this little curiosity its own little review? I would say the Omnichord could be broken down into five different sections. You have the master volume, you have the rhythm section, you have the volume adjustments for the sonic strings and the chord volume itself. You have these little gray pads, which are basically like piano keys, they make the chord sounds, and then you have this little yellow strip, which is basically your auto harp sound. This is the second section of the Omnichord. Uh, it's the little rhythm section here. This basically just gives you a little accompaniment to play along to as far as rhythmically. It's got some generic presets here, like Rock 1, Rock 2, Disco, Swing, Waltz. You have a whole entertainment machine here just waiting for you. These are what some of the uh, rhythms sound like. I've heard these on a few different recordings. You can adjust the tempo. It's it pretty crazy. Disco. Yeah. Listen to that disco goodness. Country. Then you hit this blue button here and it activates the second tier. Alright, this is the third portion of the Omnichord. You have a few different things going on here. You have your chord volume, which is basically the level of the pads. It controls the volume of that. You got something on here called a chord hold. This is basically an aftertouch thing, so when you press down the gray pad to hit the chord, you take your finger off of it, and the note still st sustains. Sorry, I can't speak apparently. So you don't have to concentrate so hard on, uh, you know, holding the pad down all the time. There's a button here called auto bass chord. You hold that down, and it does a funky little bass rhythm for you here. And that is all, that bass line is all dependent upon the rhythm button that you have pressed down. For instance, if you have disco, it'll be one bass rhythm. If you have rock, it'll be another one. It just all varies. I like to keep that off though, technically, in general, I would say. Now we have this here called Sonic Strings. Ooh, doesn't that sound exotic? I'm gonna turn my chord hold down button on for this. This controls the harp on the right of the Omnichord. So basically I'm gonna hold down this C chord here and then I'm going to rub my finger up and down this little golden path here. Now I'm gonna turn the volume up a little bit. Um, This is also another thing that can be heard on a lot of songs. On the face of the Omnichord, we have these little gray squares. These are essentially your keys, like keys on a piano. Now, as you may notice, they're broken down into major, minor, and seventh. 
So those are the only chords you can play. But honestly, that's good enough to compose a song anyway. So if that's all you want to do with it, then it's perfect for that. You can see all the notes at the very top there. You have uh, the F, C, G, D, A, E, B. Then you have F sharp, D flat, A flat, E flat, B flat. Kind of a weird way to break it down, but whatever, it works. So you basically hold down the pad and it makes a sound. Now over to our right here, we have this little golden uh, strip, if you want to call it that. This is basically your harp sound. Uh, I'll demonstrate this here. We're going to first press down one of these little squares here to uh, activate the chord. And this activates the harp too. So you can run your finger up and down it, and it pretty much plays the notes in that scale. So for instance, if I hit an A minor, it's going to play notes from an A minor scale, which you could do some pretty cool things with that. You know, you can uh, That's pretty neat. Well, that's about all I have to say about the Omnichord. If you liked what you heard, you can pretty much pick one up off of eBay for fairly cheap. Now, even though they are rare, they're rare in the sense that you don't really see them a lot, like on stage at your favorite rock venue. They're not rare in the sense that they're hard to come by. So they're not super expensive, and they have varying models and all that other stuff. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure you check out my other videos on YouTube as well. I am kind of just getting into this and I'm making other videos. Maybe give me suggestions or tell me that I suck. Either way, uh, I'm learning something and it's adding to what I got at growing up as a kid from my periods. <laughs>